Yesterday, the Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing on the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, the revised version of H.R. 4. As you may recall, H.R. 4 was passed by the House Democrats back in August and was dubbed H.R. 1 version 2.0 because like its failed predecessor, it threatens states' elections, election rights and gives authority over elections to the federal government. Now, during yesterday's hearing, Deputy Attorney General Kristen Clark said she was there to, quote, sound the alarm. Actually, I finally found something that I agree with on the Biden administration. I want to sound the alarm, too, but for a different reason. This is nothing more than a federal takeover of our election system. And here to talk about it, Ken Blackwell, Senior Fellow for Human Rights and Constitutional Governance here at FRC. He is also the chairman of the Center for Election Integrity at a the American First Policy Institute and the former Ohio Secretary of State. Ken, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tony, good to be with you. All right, let's talk about the elements of the John Lewis Voting Advancement Bill. It's still a power grab at its essence. You can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig, Tony. And this is still a power grab by the federal government. It would destroy the accountability systems that we've been reliant upon. It actually gives citizens at the local level control over the election process, not a status, federal, authoritarian government. So, Ken, is this the dialed back version that, Sec uh, that uh, Senator Manchin said he would support that focuses on pre-clearance of uh, election lines and drawing those uh, districts? No, this actually uh, is, is, is not a substantial change. If Joe Manchin embraces this, he will have turned his back on West Virginians and he will have in fact uh, went against all of his promises in the past to protect our constitutional republic from a federal takeover uh, and a full-footed plat planning of authoritarianism. Let's talk about the uh, the provisions in this measure, the pre-clearance measures. Uh, explain that to our listeners, what that means. Back in the mid 60s, uh, there were states and voting jurisdictions that were under a pre-clearance mandate, which meant that there had been past practices of discrimination and they couldn't make any changes in their election laws without pre-clearance by the, by the Justice Department. What this would do in a roundabout way is make all states right. subject to pre-clearance. See, Louisiana- that would, that would give the- we used, control to When the I was government. in the legislature, Louisiana had to do that in that every 10 years when a census is conducted, we just went through that. And state legislatures then draw, redraw the lines for Congress. They redraw the lines for the state legislature. We had to go to Washington to get them to approve our uh, lines, yeah. all of our districts. Yeah. And so what this would do is require every state to do that. Okay. I mean, the impact of that is quite significant when you think of what happened 10 years ago when Republicans gained control of the majority of state legislatures, they were able to draw lines that reflected the state. And, and it, the concern the Democrats have, if I'm not mistaken, Ken, is that they want to be able to determine who gets elected, and they do that by drawing the lines. I, I, absolutely. Again, underscore it is a, it's a federal takeover of the process. Uh, and if you look at the playbook of the Democrats, Pelosi and Schumer, they want to make it a one-party controlled federal government, right. which means that they want to guarantee a liberal democratic control forever. And that's why we must we must must push back. Well, in, in another portion of this bill is that in this last year, we've seen states respond to what happened last November, and we've had uh, 19 states have adopted 33 different laws that ref have reformed the election system. This would nullify all of that. All of that would be knocked out by this bill. Uh, absolutely. Look, there are two tracks that we are always concerned about. One is the chain of custody of ballots. Uh, and the reforms that we've seen put in place tighten the chain of custody, and that would in fact give us a better confidence in the count. And then, and then thirdly, verification. Uh, and that's why most many states are moving towards photo identification for voters. Pretty common sense uh, step, 
and it's being resisted. This would do away. So let me ask you a question. You know, they complain about this as, as actually saying that this this stifles voting, this uh, takes away fundamental rights. Well, look, when, when you, and I know these illustrations are used, but it, it's, it's important to, to draw the comparison. You cannot get on into an airport to get on an airplane without a photo ID. You can't, in fact, today, you can't even buy Sudafed uh, without a photo ID to prove that you're not, uh, you know, gonna use it for something else. I mean, they take your driver's license. So, I mean, isn't a vote in terms of electing our leaders, isn't that something that's extremely important to the future of our country? Absolutely. And Ken Kukowski and I wrote in 2009 about the balance between voting rights and the duties of citizenship. It is not an overbearing duty for us to take the steps to make sure that votes are not negated by illegal ballots. And photo ID will help us make sure that voters are who they claim to be and they are legal voters and, and their votes won't negate a, 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 le a legal ballot cast by another, another citizen. But these folks, not only do they want open borders, they want voters without borders. Yeah. So they can get the numbers that they want to maintain a majority across, uh, across time. Okay, Ken Blackwell, uh, final question for you. We're almost out of time. What do our listeners need to do? We need to engage. God has invested human agency in each and every one of us. We can't act as if we can't influence history. We can't influence outcome through our engagement. Get engaged. Action, action, action. All right. Uh, so, folks, you want to contact your members of Congress and encourage them to vote against the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act because it is a federal takeover of our election system, negating what so many states have done just in the last six months to... Uh, address these issues in our elections.